Hey, hey, you are watching the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jordan Morgan. Well, hi there, everybody. Welcome to this fine Sunday or Saturday um, and I think yeah depending Monday, on where you are Jared you're, you're the rare right. person that's on a Sunday <laughs> I am from the future and so far so good <laughs> now so interestingly enough here in the states holiday weekend it's uh, Labor Day weekend and yet over in Aussie land it's Father's Day yeah it is it is Father's Day over here I've just been lavished with uh, gifts that you, uh, you know, your kids pick up from school. They have like a Father's Day stand. I don't know if this is a thing in America too, but they have like this stand where you can go and get like, you know, $2, uh, $3 gifts, you know, and uh, you, you get lavished with those. And those gifts include a stick of, ooh, what you can hear in the background is Zachary a pinball app going up, but more <laughs> than that later. Um, that is very shiny. Um, so... What you can, um, what you get is like, a, I think I got a stick of like M and M's, like in a little tube, and I can eat those. And I got a, a a truckload of mints, i.e., it's a little plastic truck dispenser with mints in it, and um, I got a uh, what else did I get? I got some. I got a biscuit with dad on it, so a cookie with dad on it, um, and I got some some handmade gifts which of course are the best for father's day um and, uh, well they're the like. best except for that you have to lie about how much you think they're wonderfully crafted well, that, <laughs> that's, that is true yes um, so they, they they're very thoughtful and uh that's that's the uh the beauty of those gifts um because you can see the effort that's gone into making them so you have to look past what they are and, and look at the effort yeah, see, here things are a little bit different because of the timing. Um, Father's Day uh, for us isn't until June 20th, I think, something oh, of that nature. Okay. So it's after the kids are out of school, and um, it used to be right at graduation, so they used to always do promotions in the store that would say grads and dads. But uh, oh, no, it's right. the it's the moms that get all the handcrafted uh, goodies from school, the, the macaroni necklaces, if you will. Oh, the macaroni necklaces, yes. <laughs> yes, the... <laughs> yes, I, I'm aware of those. We haven't actually got any of those. That's, that's more of a uh, like a preschool thing, I think. They 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 up their game a little bit when it's um when it's uh like elementary school or you know primary school as we call it here in Australia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I can't say that. I don't know uh, what age they stopped doing those kind of gifts or Mason art projects be doing that anymore for you. Oh no, well, not no. for not now. No, not anymore. No, now he would draw me a card that would probably feature some really violent character that he's created with blood spewing all over the place. So, <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> pretty pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, I wish we could say things have ramped up and accelerated, but we're very much uh, sitting in the back of the car right now screaming at Zen, Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Because... Not much has been happening. It's silence is deafening. Well, I mean, they've been busy because I know that they were just at, uh, what was it, GamesCon or something like that, and now they're at uh, mm. PAX. I think it's PAX West. Um, yeah. So they're doing doing these conferences. They're doing the rounds. Yeah. They're doing the rounds, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, what are they advertising? Well, they're advertising, uh, right now I think they're doing Castle Storm 2 and, oh, yeah. and then the Star Wars on the Switch. Yes, getting those out and about. We'll say we. I was watching uh, the new guy, <laughs> Geno, um, as opposed to Ekosh. I'm trying to figure out instead of. I, I always want to be like Ekos and Gino. Um, Ekosh. Ekosh. It's, yeah, say so you're probably with the with the Prague accent. The right. Czech accents. Yeah. It's um. <laughs> anyway, he was doing a stream on Thursday, uh, like he does every Thursday, and. Uh, we posted the question whether, because he was playing a Marvel table, and somebody was like, mm. oh, it'd be nice if us Switch players could play that. And so then I asked, um, what are the odds of that being in a pack very similar to uh, Star Wars? And he kind of was like, oh, well, you know, probably I probably would come in a pack that way. So I'm like, yeah, that conversation's been had. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Again, I mean, it makes sense too because those are so old that it would make sense to package them as a as a one thing. Yes. But the suck part is that it's not part of FX3. No, so you wouldn't get the ecosystem, would you? No. Unless they took the effort to actually put them into FX3. But that's another challenge altogether because there's a whole lot more infrastructure they need to tack onto those tables. Yeah, except for, I mean, they tacked on their own infrastructure to the Star Wars tables. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. I mean, true, true. So yeah. it's not it's not out of the woods. Like They can, they can retrofit this stuff. Well, not only that, but they've, they've already done that with FX3 on all the other platforms. I mean, all mm-hmm. the other platforms have uh, all those tables. Have those tables, so it's not like it's a straight port over. Yeah, you would you would think that they you know there's They're, already worked out on Steam there and, and all right. The I I think it, it's so. there's something licensing wise yeah, that happened right. with Nintendo uh, and Star Wars and Marvel specifically. Mm. So who knows yeah, what that like is. It. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it, it, it's getting out of the realm of me being able to guess these things. So I'm just kind of yeah. not. Because licensing is hard. Let's go to the mall. <laughs> Let's go to the mall? What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Barbie, a Barbie meme. You should look it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't explain it here. Go and look it up. <laughs> that one, that's, yeah, that's, that's different. Um, it is. That's my trademark. Different. <laughs> <laughs> different shiny new um what else has been going on well why don't we talk about this right now uh let's go into a little bit of uh zacharia stuff yeah that's right so uh you may have heard before that um my phone started to blink and flash um and make noise before because uh, Zachariah Pinball have released their brand new shiny version of uh, the essentially the Steam product on Android, and um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's probably not going to focus. Play right. Focus, you're, you're too close. Back off. Back off. Back, uh, it it towards back it towards your face. Back it towards your face. Back it towards your face. You know why? It's, oh, there he is. There we go. That looks shiny. It's very shiny. It's the same logo. Yeah. yeah you know what it is? It's blurring. It's your. It's. I think it's your background blur. Yeah, it is a black background, background blur. So yeah, here it is. It's it looks exactly like the um, the the version on um, Steam, and when I tap the logo, it logs me in automatically to Google Play Games, so I can track my progress. And okay, hold on. Here's here's the sixty four dollar question, and why is that beeping at me every single time I push a button? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a very good question. I'm like, what is going on? Um, tables, do you have them? I am going and doing a check now. So, um, wow. Okay. So I get I get asked first. I say for three dollars twenty nine, and that's three dollars twenty nine Australian pesos. Um, <laughs> here is a unique opportunity to get an in app pack with twenty seven retro tables for a three dollar twenty nine special price. It's pretty Don't good. Twenty seven tables very- for four bucks. <laughs> That's almost like a, I just buy that now. I've got Google Play credit. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy that um, because yeah, why not? Twenty seven retro tables. Shut up and take my money for three dollars twenty nine. Um, so yeah, so that was the first thing you get when you um start up the app. Um, it's just processing the payment now, um, and I need to change my payment source. Okay, well, uh, you, you work on payment source. I'm going to tell a story. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you tell a story. <laughs> Do that. So I had um, logged in to watch a second Twitch broadcast, only to find out that I had been banned from the Twitch chat on... Banned? Banned uh, from the Zacharia Pinball Twitch chat, to which I was like... Why? What? What does Mart not like me anymore? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, so so I inquired, and he said that his moderators. I didn't know he had any moderators. His moderators had banned me for violating the chat terms because I promoted our show. Oh. To which naughty boy. Right, but to which I was like, I promoted our show. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, so I was chatting, 
and commenting on gameplay and everything that was going on. It was during Buffalo Pinball visiting and playing. And it was time to get ready for our podcast. And so I just said, you know, I like it when people say, hey, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Thanks for, you know, doing whatever. And so that's exactly what it is. So it's like, hey, this is great. Got to run. Got to go prep my show that's uh, happening in 90 minutes. If you get done here, because I knew that they weren't going to be going on 90 minutes, I was like, when you get done here, pop over and say hi. That was it. I didn't yeah. post a link. I didn't even say the name. I didn't say, get ready for the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I, I didn't even do that. Um, but that was enough. That got me banned. Wow. That's a very, very twitchy bot, isn't it? A twitchy bot. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was a twitchy bot or if it was a twitchy uh, moderator. I think it was a twitchy moderator, but... A human. A human. Human. Moderator. Yes. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, thankfully, Mart went in and talked to them and unbanned me, but now I feel like i am uh, got to walk on eggshells. <laughs> talk, talk them off the cliff, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm in the game now. I've okay. purchased the, uh, the remake pack. Um, oh, not the remake pack. The, the, the retro, retro pack. pack. Yeah, yeah. So that that gives you basically the, the 27 retro tables, um, all the ones they've done. So all the ones that are EMs, basically. So I can tell you for sure that the gold pack that I previously purchased for it mm -hmm. is owned. In nice. The game. Very good. So that gives you what removes the one ball limitation from all the 27 sold state and 14 EM tables. You also remove advertisements from story mode. Um, you can play without an internet connection on all the tables. Uh, end story mode and unlock four player local multiplayer on all 27 solid state and 14 em tables wait so, what's that four play local so you'd be passing the phone around yeah hot seat basically on your phone okay okay so yeah there you go so the options you have are the gold pack the remake pack which in australian pesos is 32 dollars 99 Ooh, um, so that that one's a little pricey <laughs> That's probably, if you take 40% off that, it's probably around the, let's call it mm, 25, if my maths does it right, US dollars. Okay. Maybe a bit more. Okay. My maths is a bit shady when it goes to 40% off. Uh, feel free in the comments to help me do the calculations because maths is hard. Let's go to the mall. Um, retro pack is owned. Campaign pack is, if you want to do the campaign mode, um, uh, which is sort of like the RPG style um, version of uh, the table. So you go through and do challenges and goals. And Chris has covered that once or twice before. I have done um, Twitch streams of that, in fact. That's right. Go and check out the Twitch streams. So that is $4.89. Um, and then the last one is the award pack. So Ah, the award one, pack. That man. is that is the... Um, ones that you unlock yeah i'm trying to think what they called them but it was the basically the tables that they'd made prior to zacharia that they put out on uh yes on ios so these tables include the mummy aliens hippie firefighter speed kings beast master voyager wizard zombie and caveman they're the ones you get and right. yes they are they actually have little previews of the uh the art in the top it's look the interface is very slick. Um, I really do quite like them. So at the moment, when I go into SS, everything is unlocked and um, it all is happy. There's bottom uh, sort filters at the bottom. So you can sort um, by release. You can sort alphabetically. You can sort by the year it was released. Um, you can also just use a random table button to load just a random table and start playing it. Um, you can also... Um, hit on the uh, uh, whoops um, I don't know how to get back from here um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't like having you go back that, that's not a no. that's not a Zachary feature <laughs> oh, no, there it is back I just couldn't see it because I'm blind so <laughs> bottom bottom right hand corner of the uh, info screen is your back button it just doesn't look that pronounced but so yeah that's all the solid state tables you go into the EM tables and um, there's 4, 8, 12, 14 14 tables, same options in there. So the interface is really consistent. Um, all the remake tables, because I haven't purchased the pack, they're all on free play. So you get one ball play on those. Um, Which so we now have time. an update. Those replay, it would be basically 20 bucks. Uh, and there's 27 remake tables, so less than a buck mm. a table. That's very cheap. 
And look, those remake tables are like worth a crack because they're really nicely done. Um, like really nicely done, particularly Fire Mountain. <laughs> Fire Mountain is is excellent. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't compare uh, to to Stars Phoenix, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and yeah, all the retro tables. Uh, gee, you got a lot of retro tables. There's like four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-seven, all in the grid. Nice and easy to select. Really nice. Um. And then, now with the award tables, when you go to that tab, um, they're all there, but um, they tell you exactly how much you need to unlock them. So they're all quest related. Right, yeah, you so, have to do achievements, but there's probably an option there to purchase them outright. I think for yes. us on Steam, it was all of $2. Yeah, and that's exactly right. If you go to the store, you can go award pack and you purchase it for $7.99. Yeah. So you just unlock them straight away, and and you've got them. Um, so yeah, that that's great. Look, for Ra rather than grinding like, through the four thousand achievements that are actually in Zachariah Pinball, and I'm not probably, kidding either. <laughs> no, no, no. Because there's um, the, to unlock Caveman, which is the the last one there, it's one thousand six hundred quests. So yeah, mm, that's a just lot a, of just a few. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that's probably worth the seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so now it comes down to so i'm in the solid state tables um i'm going to go to one that i know and love which is um magic castle magic castle is one of the tables that's uh um in netherworld and it's a regular favorite in tournaments because it's rather brutal um <clears throat> so the menu comes up it's uh if you get like this little box out and again i'll try and show you um it's, yep uh, we're seeing it yeah so it's it's got the really typical sort of style um, that the the Steam app has. It has a lovely flyover where they zooms in on table features. The table's really crisp um, and looks great on on the Android devices. It's even got things like you know um, glass reflection and dirty glass mode and stuff like that, which is activated at the moment. It looks really really slick. I think um, some of the buttons are a little bit hexagonal rather than being round like they are on the uh, Steam app, but that will just be to reduce the poly count a bit. Um, <clears throat> so you've got, uh, in your table menu, you've got the following options. You've got play, rules, options, fly cam. Um, it also tells you your quests and your leaderboard score, and then allows you to jump back out to the main menu. So let's have a little go. So when you bring up um, play, it brings you up to the menu where you select how many players you want and um, and all that. And yes, it's not focusing well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it was good and then it fuzzed out. <laughs> Let me just go and um, turn off my blur mode. There you go. Yeah, turn on blur. blur. Hey, there we go. There we go. It's a bit better. So you've got all your options there. And uh, so you've got mode. So if you go into mode, it's, you, you can select from arcade, simulation, or user. So when you select the mode, it actually brings up a little sub menu there. So it keeps it all really neat. You're not going screen to screen, and that's um that's really quite slick. Um, so um, you got everything from mode, players, ball size. So all the all the stuff that you you kind of have um, in um, the the Steam version, which is very very nice. So uh, well, they said that they were going to try and do a, a more or less a direct port over. Mm. So yeah, yeah. So um, you can choose the game modes from classic. Challenge, Checkpoint, Survivor, Lamp Hunter, Target Eliminator, 90 Second Challenge. I'm just going to go for Classic and uh, see how it goes. So I'll uh, turn up the volume so you can hear it. Um, all right, let's give it a plunge. Give it a flip. Plunge, plunge, flip, flip. Oh, yeah. So I could say that there's absolutely zero delay in the... Um, Oh, your bikey gang's up, up and running again. I hear Chris. My, my what? Your bikey gang. Just uh, yes, the just yeah, spotted. yeah, the bike gang of one. Yeah, of one. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Harley. <laughs> no, it's just a uh, lawnmower uh, engine that has no exhaust on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, yeah, it um, it shows you in the bottom right hand corner. Um, the uh, your next leaderboard score. Yep. So um, it's quite nice. You get a, a instant view of that all the time. Um, 
and sounds really good. There's zero delay on any of the mechanical f effects that I can hear, and um, it's it's brutal as it always is. So um, it comes up with the game time bonus alert, which I believe you can actually switch off in the game. It's it's one of those things you can select. Um, but yeah, it feels strong. I just wish the one at Netherworld played like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a big ask, you know. Yeah. And and quest completed. Global multiplier. Global domination. So there you go. It's um it's very nice. It's slick. Uh, it's a definitely an improvement over the original Android one. But you know the the original Android one now is um you know pretty old. So yeah, it stands to reason that it's looking a bit tired. But this is very shiny. Um, yeah, so if you, the trick is, I'm sure that if you had purchased tables with um, the original app, you've got to make sure you log on with the same Google ID. Right. So that will then give you access to the, the the tables that you purchased in the original pack. So you get a lot unlocked for free if you actually um, use the um, use the same uh, Google ID. So that's pretty generous of them. And I think you know the the remakes and stuff, getting those like you know all jokes aside even though you know chris and i did voices for a couple of them they, they're really well thought out and really good remakes of the original theme so well yeah it's worth having a go adam for like 32 bucks there's a lot of table action there for for 32 bucks australian so yeah absolutely i, would, I mean i would strongly just getting on it if you're on android yeah we're gonna i know that they're now currently working on the ios version they're hoping to have that out Fairly soon, uh, possibly by September, I think was what the uh, goal is. So mm. we'll see where that goes. Yeah, well, look, good work, um, Magic Pixel dudes. Um, it's a lovely release, very nice and crisp, and um, look, top work. It's it's been worth the wait, and uh, thanks also for for um, supporting your um, existing fan base with the the cross buy. Um, yeah, no, it's good to know that that uh, actually went through. Uh, yeah, because that was always the big question. Mm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's, it's you know, it, based on the quality though, like even if that wasn't included, I'd, I'd almost you know just go and buy them again anyhow because they're probably out of all the 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 packages on um, Google Play at the moment, that's one of the best ones that isn't you know like Zen or something like that with the modern tables. It's a really nice um, early '80s um, package of tables, and you know. Who, who wouldn't want more early 80s and um, EMs in their pinball repertoire on Android? More, more, more. Um, now, you also said that you, for the first time in a very long time, uh, cracked open the Zen Williams app on your phone. Yeah, I did. You know, I was I was just on the way home um, from work, and I was just, you know, it was the, train, the train trip was taking a bit longer. There were some delays, and I thought, you know what? I don't really want to listen to music, which is typically what I always do. I catch up with podcasts and stuff on the train. I went... You know what the the wind uh, the 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 wind balls wind balls app wind, <laughs> wind balls okay we can wind go with balls. that you know the, the, the wind balls the, the Williams pinball app is uh, on my phone still it I have literally never not opened it since probably volume two because I just got Jack at the all the um, Smurf berries and all that sort of action and I thought you know what I'm going to suspend my disbelief and I'm going to open it again and um, and just see what they've done because you know Chris has been covering you know all the the um, uh, the, the work that they've been doing sort of iteratively over the um, the releases and um, you know there's a fair yes in an effort to get people that. to stop whining like Jared like, <laughs> yeah. so I thought right cool I'll open it up and uh, okay I, I've got to download 180 meg of data cool I'll update all the tables um, and then I'm in and look they've they, look it's a lot better it's a lot better from a balanced perspective um, I don't feel like I'm getting um, nickel and dimed as much in the app anymore. It feels like you're still getting some value. You can go and like um, just watch a quick video and play one of the uh, extra basic challenges. You seem to get more parts. It feels a bit easier getting more parts. You, you're getting like I got a couple of coins when I was playing, rather than just like like um, graphical enhancements. You know, the, right? Like, so honestly, if so in general, it feels like you're being rewarded now as opposed to them grinding, grinding right. Yeah, yeah. Really, it really does feel a lot fairer and a lot more balanced now. 
um so look i'd recommend that if you if like me you didn't bother um playing it after season two because you just it just felt yuck go back in there and give it another shot um and and just see what you think because for me look you know i wouldn't totally ignore it now uh, you know i really i played the game on steam more than i probably would android because it is a bit easier but um definitely give it a go if you're on android it's they've they've done a lot of work on it and they should you should at least see what you think um about it so i got a notification uh in the thread that i had been doing about data collection for this which i've long since stopped collecting data on the app because there was no point anymore because they kept on changing things but yeah. um no, I got somebody that just posted. They were like, I just got my final part. They go, it's so much easier, so much better changed. Um, you know, so they're all ready for doing their final upgrades and stuff. And it was just by doing the basic um, playing of it. And yeah, yeah, so that's why I feel like they definitely must have made an improvement enough with how the parts collection go. Because I haven't been collecting parts in a very long time. Um, that, yeah. it, that it got much better. It feels like that you could just play your three daily challenges and your three video challenges and not reset. And right. you'd probably actually progress relatively fairly in the game now. That's the feeling that I get now. So that's not backed up with data. That's the feeling that I get now. That's so, good. That's an important thing, though, is that if you're feeling yeah. positive... I mean, that was the whole point of me doing the data collection was because everybody was feeling negative, and I was like, well, let's throw some fact behind it. But if you're feeling mm -hmm. positive, then you're like, who cares about what the data says? <laughs> that's right. Like, if you actually want to open the app and play it now, then that's actually the better thing than, you know, what it was before, which you really didn't feel motivated to do it because you just didn't feel like you were getting value for your time spent. Right. Mm. Okay. Well, so there we go. We, we got that to uh, encourage people to go back into. Now let's talk about your Star Race. Mm, yes. Yeah, so last time we spoke, Star Race... Um, had a had a, a slight problem in that it would not boot um and to, to resolve the problem i put in an order with k's arcade and got a rotten dog mpu replacement board for um star race and based on the condition of the board interconnect the the cable that connects the driver board to the logic board i decided to get a rebuild kit for that and do it myself and save the labor and um i rebuilt that the other day um, it's really easy to do. Hey, like they give you this little tool that allows you to pop out each of the, the contacts from the existing plug. You don't need to buy another plug unless your plug's completely scorched or something, which is no reason why it should be because there's no high voltage running through that. It's just logic, logic voltage. Um, and I just repinned it. it. Took me about an hour, I think, but it got easier towards the end. Um, uh, the only thing I would advise people if they have to do it themselves is just remember that the 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 two there's there's one end of the connector that has the heavier gauge wire in it and that's to carry the the ground and the power um all the other wires in this particular repin kit were white and you get two black and two red so the two black and two red go on one end only so just make sure when you're repinning you do that right because i i did it incorrectly and i thought no i because my ocd kicked in i thought no i'll unpin the ones that i plugged in and then put them in the right hole I ended up um, in my um, jiggling of the wire, I pulled the connector off the tip of the wire, so I had to recrimp it. Um, it wasn't that hard to recrimp. Yeah, nothing, nothing like making it work for yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I just went, ah, oh, I should have just left it where it was. Anyhow, um, so yeah, 35 bucks well spent for that because it would have saved me, even though that, that worked out to be, I think, 50, 55, no, for $53 Australian. That's still cheaper than the forty-five dollars an hour labor that I have to pay to do it, and then the call Ooh, out fee. Forty-five bucks an hour labor. Eh, it is what it is. Like yeah, this, the, the the tech that I use is is a good tech. So you know, you pay him the you pay the man the money. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I did that, and so what I did is I went over to Ed's um on um on Saturday to drop off the the board. He also ordered some of the um those really nice um, LED displays for um a high speed that he's doing up and um they're the um what they call the uh i forget the name of the displays but there's this particular like they come with a, a driver board of their own um 
because they're LED and they don't need the 60 okay. volts to actually power yeah. them. And uh, it's a really nice little package. They're not cheap. I think they were about, to get them into the country, they were about $300 Australian. Um, but, you know, these the displays themselves, if you, if you can find them, aren't that cheap anyhow. So you might as well just go with the low voltage LEDs and save yourself a whole bit of trouble. Um, so you got those and um, got a, uh, a board, a pair of board side cutters so you can cut off connectors and stuff. And um, yeah, I think it, it ended up being something ridiculous like six or seven hundred dollars Australian to get it in, but um, all up. But yeah, you know, it's one of those things that you've got to do because I, would, I just wouldn't feel right handing over the, the game in an unworking state and then having the new owner spend money on it to actually get it working. It's just not, it's not the right thing to do. Especially um, since then they're like, never buy anything from Jared. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. And, you know, everyone knows that pinball, pinball is a very small, um, very tight-knit community. So you do something dodgy and your name gets out there real quick. So, you know, you don't want to do that. And also, it not, it's not only that. It's not only the reputation thing, but it's more just the fact that I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't feel right doing it. Um, so, yeah, d give the guy a nice new board. Give him a nice new interconnect. And um, that should really make sure the game's quite solid. This particular customer, he doesn't have a problem at all with um, spending the money to get the game working really solidly and really, really well. So, when with with that with godly tables, that means repinning everything. So, you know, basically just swapping all the connectors out, making sure they're brand new contacts, um, and starting essentially having the tables start from uh, a new state, essentially. Right. Right. So yeah, it's it's the right way to go. Like there you go. Tables. Yeah. So that that's the Star Race news, and um, so um, I got the. Uh, the, the payment for the table the other day that came through so I have lined up three more what, uh, three more three more yeah you told me you were just going to do one more <laughs> did you, uh, you what, know. was there a bulk sale or something <laughs> I, I got a good price for them um, so you know a, sorry a good Australian price <laughs> yeah, there is a difference, right? <laughs> there, there's definitely a difference when you're looking at um, project pins. So I've got a good Australian price for them. Um, <clears throat> I've still got change from the, um, the sale of the machine. So well, you have good. change until you need parts, which I'm assuming you need parts. And I won't. Oh, yes, I will will need parts for these. These are all African pins. Um, so I will are, are, are they Are they water damaged like Star Race was? <laughs> No, so the, this was part of the deal. I got the, this particular um, person has uh, more than one of each table that I that I got. So he has been very kind and has merged tables together for me. So I get best cabinet, best head box, and best play field out of all of them. So okay, so it's a bit of a, a Frankenstein of of three tables yeah. into one kind of table kind of deal. Yeah, that's that's right. So it's going to be like the best the best sort of specimen out of the the ones he had. So the tables that I've got are Pink Panther. They're all System Eighty got leaps. Um, so I've got a Pink Panther, uh, which is a three ball multi ball, which is the reason why I was eyeing that one off first. Um, and I've got a one called Timeline, which has a neat little mini play field a little bit like circuses mini play field a little bit like um so not sinbad's a little bit like genie's mini play field oh, okay um so it's got two flippers up there that you're using to play um and then we've got another one which is called force two and force two is a two ball multiple game but it's just got drop targets everywhere i think it's got like a total of 15 drop targets Ooh, in it that is a so, lot of drop targets so the, the thing I look for, the thing I really enjoy in a table is drop targets. So um, all, all of these tables actually have a fair few. Uh, I think I think Pink Panther is the one that has the least amount. But um, Timeline, you've got six drop targets in the um, upper play field and then a smattering of drop targets around the table. So there's a lot of stuff to shoot for on that table. And they're not they're, these ones aren't super wide. They're just regular wide bodies, got lead wides. Uh, and I think one of them is a regular size. So, um, yeah, it's a mixture of sizes in this one. So it's going to be fun. What, to what kind of uh, play field damage do they have? Oh, look, they they all got the original Mylars on them. 
so some of the um the tables have got a few chips out of them here and there like just regular holeware and stuff like that um but from what i can see of the pictures that i've got of them they're all reasonable condition we'll put it this way they're no they were no worse than star race right so you know you've got your little wear points and star race that are always going to be there but you know my approach with this one is going to be a little bit different i think what i'm going to do is if there are any big gouges uh, in the play field i'm i'm going to actually sort of polyfill them first and then do a little bit of touch up on them but i need to get that flat surface right first so i've learned so much when doing star race that right i know i know the things that i need to do now on the play field to make it like just really good and so the clear coat will actually stand up i'll definitely get protectors for around the pop bumpers because they did actually cause a little bit of um, uh, damage to the original clear coat I would certainly use the um, the color spec clear coat again um, on the table. Uh, that worked. That seemed to hold up pretty well, providing that you fix up any of the divots. So on flat surfaces on Star Race, it was it's still good. So you don't need to go out and like do a uh, automotive clear. You can use the um, the Super Cheap Autos um, clear coat system to do it pretty well. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll spend a bit more time leveling things out this time. I think when I'm doing the play fields and the, the cabinets are original too. And there's a lot more paint on them that, um, than the star race one had. So I've got a little bit more to work with there. I can actually probably retouch them quite nicely without having to re stencil the whole thing. So I think these ones are going to have less work in them than, um, star race. Um, so I should, my goal is to have at least two ready for next year's B pack. Okay. So I want two bulletproofed and ready for B pack next year. Well, the nice thing, too, is since they're all the same, uh, like, you said, what do you say, System 80? Yeah. Yeah. So since they're all the same thing there, you can now buy parts, if you will, in bulk that will apply to all three of them, and you know that your tools are going to work across the board on all three of them, and, yep. you know, you can just knock it out that way much easier than having to change up your <laughs> your your mode of, of function uh, for each time. That's right. So I'm going to leave, basically, I'm going to get the playfields. The, the first order will be playfield parts, and uh, if I can find them, plastics, because that makes a big difference if you can find plastics for these tables. Um, it l makes them look just brand new, if you can get them done. Right. right. Um, <clears throat> I did see a set of plastics for um, uh, Pink Panther around, but I'm going to have to go and hunt them down again because they were on eBay. So uh, I had the, the dudes thing listed but they were they were rather expensive they were like 150 dollars us so it's a bit of a sting um i think mean, star yeah. races plastic people people definitely charge a bit too. for the plastics <laughs> yeah well they're they're unobtainium now like these ones are new old stock too so then have been used on a um a pinball machine they've still got the the wrappers on and everything so wow. then they're they're nice um but you know i may not need to like i think from all the plastics that i saw on the um the photos they're actually not in bad condition, and I think he'll be swapping out the plastics for me to get the best ones. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm pretty confident that look, there they won't be damaged to the point that the Star Race ones were. The Star Race ones were being held together by wire; they were that bad. Wow, so, <clears throat> they were they were terrible. Like <clears throat> they were smashed beyond recognition. Um, so yeah i was lucky to find the ones for star race and it's lucky it's a low production game because it meant there were sets available um through pbr um <clears throat> but these um the, these other two games i think they're more common they're like about two thousand um table runs i think um so they're a higher production run um and that's kind of good because there usually are more parts available for them around so we'll see what happens it's gonna be fun to to do them up and <clears throat> I know where to spend the money now. Like it's you spend it on the boards, you spend it on the connectors, and really, if you can just get the playfield looking pretty nice, you don't really need to do as much stuff on the cabinet as you think you need to. Right. Um, and so my goal will be to redo the playfields, get them all new components, and then when I'm ready to get the um, boards all in one hit and get them from pascal because all these games are compatible with the pascal system um 
<clears throat> so that's that's gonna be great. I'm just gonna get an all-in-one driver board, and I'll probably even get new pop bumper boards as well and power supply, and there'll just be fresh components in there. They'll all be brand new, and that should mean that when they go on on the floor at the show next year, there will be no breakdowns because they're brand new boards. So when are you taking a delivery of these? Uh, over the next month or so. So I, there might be a chance I get one on Monday, um, but uh, the other ones will actually be um, stored off-site because I don't really have the room for them. Um, so, um, yeah, they'll be stored off-site, and I'll just grab them when I need them. Very good. Interesting mm. stuff. All right. Yes. Well, I think that's uh, that's about as much pinball news as we can squeeze out of this particular episode. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a fair bit of pinball news in this one. Actually, it's been kind of nice. Yeah, you know, go figure. This is this is why sometimes we take a week off. Um, mm. I have not been taking a week off, though, in terms of doing the Twitch broadcast. So, folks, uh, I encourage you to go over to twitch.tv slash blockade underscore pinball and follow. Uh, if you missed it on Friday, you missed me failing miserably at the $5 challenges twice. <laughs> Choked under pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't kind. Um, Monday we'll be doing another uh, mobile edition video and uh, maybe more mobile play in general. Wednesday is always uh, Steam based play uh, and then Friday is the skills challenge and then kind of a free for all for whatever uh, Whatever you want to do, all of those times typically start at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, but they're Indeed. subject to change. Because <laughs> mm. yes. you know, sometimes life happens, and it's mm. amazing how often it does. Life does tend to happen. Yeah. Yes. Um, other things, if you want to comment to us on the show, well, you could do so at that particular Twitter handle. This one that's also there on Jared's, or watch this, folks. Watch, watch it, watch it. Oh, it disappeared. Oh, yeah. Then you can go to Blockade and uh, and also check us out there. Make sure you uh, drop us comments and let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to talk about. Um, be sure to always friend me on Steam so that you can try and beat my scores or I can try and beat your scores because they tend to then pop up a lot on the Twitch stream because I always check out the leaderboard and go, oh, that bastard's in front of me. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, there's one last thing before we go. Um, I remember that but we after I dropped the stuff off at uh, uh, Ed's yesterday, we went to Pimcadia and they've got a brand new Monster Bash remake there. Oh, and very nice. It is shiny I bet wow the they have put in like Attack from Mars didn't have a lot of extra animations on it but they have really cleaned up the animations on on the Monster Bash it looks amazing so <clears throat> if you've played a remake before you'll know that the the score display and everything uses sort of like the more traditional dot style um, uh, display it looks like an old dot matrix display but it's really big like a really wide display right there's um, more dots way more dots so when you um go and play this this particular monster bash now because this is the premium edition that's the one with the big display when the animation and stuff comes on like you know when um igor finds body parts and stuff the dots basically go to high definition and you get this amazing like it's still dot art but it's super crisp and colored and everything like it's they've spent a lot of time working on these dots it looks amazing and the lighting effects in it um they've got multi-zone leds in it now so it'll actually change color like uh, when the mummy gets lit everything turns orange right because the mummy, oh across the entire playfield yeah across the entire playfield most of the playfield it turns orange and when you get drac everything goes red and um when you get frankenstein i think everything's purple so uh, it's really nicely done the way they've integrated the light shows into there now and of course being um, LEDs it's vibrant as anything <laughs> when Ed was playing it he was saying I don't think I ever would have thought that I'd find a game that was more bright than Ghostbusters goes, <laughs> I've found one today because here it is it's, it is crazy it's beautiful beautiful game so um, yeah it's uh, 
if you are in the Brisbane area or you know of somewhere in your town that actually has a, a Monster Bash, go and check it out because it plays it plays very differently to the ones you might have been playing that were from the 90s. It plays much better. Cool. I know that uh, Zen put on location here in Southern California the Championship Edition table at a Dave & Buster's. Unfortunately, oh, yes. uh, where they... The location that they chose is it's in the city of Torrance, and that mm. is nowhere in any direction I normally drive. <laughs> oh, really? So it's um, a bit out of the way. It's, it's a bit out of the way, and worse, it is a, basically about an hour drive to it with friendly L.A. traffic. As soon as you get into right. ugly L.A. traffic, it's now going to be about an hour and a half. That's just one way. <laughs> that's a long commute. That's like going, to put that in perspective for Aussies, that's from driving from my place to the Gold Coast in the car. Right. Mileage-wise, it's not that far. I think it's a 20, 28 miles or something like that. Oh, okay. But time spent, that's a whole other story. And it's like, oh, why, guys, why couldn't you guys have put it in the Dave & Buster's that's uh, closer to me in the city of Orange because then I would have actually gone and checked it out without hesitation because there's yeah, plenty yeah. for me to do in that particular area. <laughs> like oh. where there's things that I drive purposely to that area for. So, um, oh, right. I'm so all, what sort of... What distance um, is that away from you? That is, I think, as the crow flies, maybe 16 miles. But it would basically take me about 20 minutes, uh, okay. 20, 25 right. minutes. And there's not, I don't have to worry about traffic. Right. So That would be lovely. That's the that's the key difference. Um, so Anywhere in L.A., it's traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully uh, that's not the permanent location and maybe they move it to one of the other locations uh, closer to me. It'd be nice. If it's on, if you're listening, yeah. please do that. Orange. Um, Orange. <laughs> <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll go check and uh, have a chance to uh, see what this thing is uh, feels like. But um, until then, I don't think that I'm going to make that trip. Um, that's a long trip. Yeah. Long trip, a long, lot of gas. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's the only other thing that uh, that uh, was of note that it was happening on their Twitters. So, yeah, like we say, that's why we say sign up for Twitter, even if you don't feel like tweeting. There is good information that Zen puts out in that, and we try and forward that information also, uh, spread it around. So, hmm. all right, uh, well, that's it for us today, and we thank you for stopping by and watching and or listening if you do that too. Still, <laughs> hmm. and. Uh, until next time, well, I think this is now the thing. Jared, what are we doing next time? Uh, I, I think that we're going to be talking about stuff and things. I like it. All right, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>